The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminas on Oregon Native Television. Like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oregon Native Television. A lot to talk about this week. Of course, everybody's on spring break this week, so but we got a lot to talk about. End of the boys' basketball season. Um, we've had an OAA team win their first state championships in 1966. We're going to talk about that today. Um, new girls basketball coach at Berkeley High School. Um, of course, um, we're going to talk that as well and what the impacts are going to be there. Um, and then we have the big story in football. Um, of course, at West Bloomfield, they have a new head coach there. Um, in Zach Hilbers taking over, and we're going to break down um, what, what the impact of that's going to be for West Bloomfield football um, going forward there. So let's look at our, so let's look at, let's start, be, let's begin with our main story. Obviously, we're going to go football first here. Of course, a lot of people look at this hoop, this move as a, um, you know, as it was a good, I mean, like it was a um, interesting move. Um, West Bloomfield going back in house with their, Coaching, coaching church. Um, they named Zach Hilbers the new head coach, um, and I know Zach Hilbers personally very well. Um, you know, former quarterbacks coach, used to coach girls basketball. Um, currently, he is one of the track. Co- he's the head track coach um, over at West Bloomfield. Um, so I really, you know, when you look at this move, of course, Zach Hilbers has really paid his dues. I mean, he's a state championship coach as an assistant under Coach Ron Bellamy. Um, he's learned, he's he's been through it all. And, you know, for him to get this opportunity, um, you know, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy, um, you know, to get this opportunity, um, you know, to coach a varsity football program, considering, you know, a program that's been very successful like West Bloomfield has. Um, so when you look at, the move here, I mean, like, you know, when you look at this hire, I mean, like, um, you know, the kids know him. The kids love him over at West Bloomfield. Um, so when you look at the transition, you know what I mean? I don't really see a transition from Coach Ron Bellamy to Zach Hilbers. You know, I mean, then the coach, Terry Grice, and then to Ron Hilbers. I mean, to Zach Hilbers. Um when you really look at, you know, what Grice did in his two years over at West Bluefield, he did he did a really nice job with that team, really nice job. Um, but I'm curious to see how they're going to do on Hilbert's because I don't really see a transition period here because one, you know, the system's still intact. You know, obviously you have the RPO, you have the, you basically you still have the same principles in play over there at West Bluefield. I mean, and what helps Hilbers is that he's been a quarterback's coach. So he knows Raekwon Nance's style. He knows his system. I mean, so that's going to help things here. That's going to really help with the transition period. I mean, like, you know, but I'm curious to see what differences that Hilbers is going to make with this team, if any. Um, Obviously, when you look at the schedule, I mean, like, West Bloomby does open up. Um, I think they're at Wayne State. Um, I think they got Chippewa Valley first week one, um, which that'll be very interesting. Um, and then of course you have the red gauntlet and then of course they close out the year. Um, I got to find out with that schedule because my brain just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's it's a Monday morning, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's just got to make sure that, you know, your, your brain's just basically like out of a fog right now. You know what I mean? We're in a, you know, we're in a cloudy day here at studio, so. But when you but when you look at Zach Hilbers, and I think this is going to be, you know, I really think that players are going to play harder for coaches they love, and they absolutely love Zach Hilbers. I mean, you look at a player like um, Raekwon Nance, you look at Kari Jackson. Um, Kari Jackson, I'm curious to see where they're going to put him. I mean, like, linebacker, I know he's seen some time at wide receiver. Um, I know... They got a couple of transfers that just got in there. Um, you know, they got a transfer man over here on who came in there. Um, I, I just think when you look at 
when you look at this, I mean, like, obviously, you know, I mean, reading, reading the press release, um, you know, I mean, like, you know, he's been there most of his life. And, you know, I really, I think he said the right things. I mean, he said the right things. you got proven players coming back. Um, I mean, Jaden, Jaden Allos is another guy I'm high on next year, this year for football. Um, I was Brandon Davis Swan up front. Um, you know, their linebackers are solid. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I think if there's one weakness I have with West Bluefield program strength, it's a big concern. Um, so I'm very curious to see how Hilbers adjusts to that. Um, but he does have that track record. He has that proven record. He's proven. He knows how to win. And this is where, this is where I think that, you know, West Bluefield is going to be. I expect them to be very good this year. I mean, now, are they at the level of a state championship contender? I, I think they are. Um, you know, obviously, you look at the teams there that are um, that have really made some noise. Um, obviously, you look at teams like Belleville, who, you know, when they made their move, and I think I've been hearing rumblings, you know, they might have to make another coaching move again. Um, I, I just think that, I think Hilbert's best fits what West Bluefield needs right now. And I think he provides the coaching stability that they need right now, you know, and especially competing at a very high level. And that's what West Bluefield needs right now is, you know, you know, especially when you look at, of course, the um, changeover, obviously, with Terry Grice leaving, um, you know, going to Texas for his job, um, you know, and I mean, like he, he's done a really nice, he did a really nice job with that team. I mean, he's did a really nice job of that program. But when you look at a guy like Hilbers, you know, who's been there, paid his dues, I mean... You know, it's going to be, um, it, I, I don't know how the adjustment is going to be, but it should be a smooth transition. I mean, because of the kids adjusting to what he's doing, I don't really see really the warm up things or anything like that changing. Um, if I'm Hilbers, one thing I would adjust with West Bluebit, obviously, discipline. Um, that was one I really got on, um, Tyrese Grice, um, especially last year. Um, and I noticed that, you know, a couple of years ago when I saw them in the playoff game against Novi, where, um, penalties, this lack of discipline, you know, if he can get that discipline addressed, then I'll tell you what, I think West Bluebird has got a lot of, you know, then I think they can make a serious run. I mean, like, you know, when you look at it here, but I think discipline's the one they got to address. And if they do, then clearly I think this team could go, can go some places this year. Um, when you look at, obviously, you know, when you look at the schedule, you know West Bloomers can play, obviously, a tough schedule. Um, it's, they got to go to Clarkson this year. They got to go to Lake Orion this year. Um, those are going to be not easy games. I think they got to go to Oxford as well this year. Um, you know, and then they play Chippewa Valley at Wayne State, and then they um, close out the year at, um, you know, they close out. I got to look at the schedule here, so I'm going to pull that up. Um, but when you look at West Bloomfield, people look at, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't fix it. And I, I think with West Bloomfield, you know, that's the direction they, they went with. I mean, the mantra there, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they clearly did that. Um, but, you know, when you look at West Bloomfield, people are going to say, okay, um, are they in a decline? Uh, I don't necessarily think they are. I mean, I'd be shocked. I mean, like, but... You, I mean, like, you never know. I mean, obviously, when you look at West Bluefield, um, you know, obviously with the changes they made. Um, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I mean, the schedule, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, last year, obviously, they, they played a tough schedule. They lost to Rochester Adams in the um, in the um, regional final. In the, um, so they lost to, um, man, my brain's all gone this morning. <laughs> um, but, um. They did lose in the playoffs to Roch. I mean, like, in the postseason. Um, they were actually upset by Detroit Cast Tech. I mean, now I could go back and remember now. I mean, they were upset by Detroit Cast Tech. I, I still couldn't believe that. Um, I couldn't even believe when they had the matchup there. I mean, I felt real bad for them. I mean, I mean, bottom line is, you know, I still think 
that year, the MHA really, it didn't give them a fair, a fair shake, in my opinion. I mean, if it were me, if I was in that playoff committee, I would have sent West Bloomfield more West. Because I think, I think if they would have went more West, they would have had a better chance. I mean, but that's my take on that. Um, but I think Hilbert's going to do a really good job there. I mean, I think he's going to do a really good job. I remember speaking to him during media day. Um, you know, how excited. i um, going to try to get him here on this podcast um, a couple times, hopefully this year. I mean, like, um, hopefully during the summer. Um, we'll talk West Bloomfield football a lot. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm really, if you're in Laker Nation, the swamp, you got to love this hire. You got to love what Zach Hilbert brings. You know he's gonna bring character. He's gonna bring, gonna bring a high level competition to West Bloomfield, um, and I, I don't expect really anything, any changes um, to West Bloomfield this, um, you know, especially heading into the season where I think they got a good chance to be very good this year. Um, even, even though I think the Reds gonna be a little bit more tougher when you look at the teams in there. I mean, I'm curious to see how I think like Orion's gonna be better. Um, I think Clarkston. Clarkson's Clarkston. Um, I think they might take a little step back. Adams, I think, is going to take a step back despite having Brady Prescorn. Oxford's a team I think could be a team up in the rise. Um, Stony Creek, there's some questions there with Stony. Um, so when you look at the red this year, I mean, like, you know, I, I think the division's going to be, you know, West Boopy is still the team of the team of the crop in the division, but. I just think when you look at the division where it's at, um, honestly, um, West Blue has got a good chance, but they've got to go to the they got to go to Lake Orion, they got to go to, they got to go to Clarkson, they got to go to um, Oxford, and then their non conference. I know they got Southfield Arts and Tex on that schedule, um, which they've had some battles. I mean, West Blue and Southfield Arts and Tech, they've had some battles um, last year. West Blue winning the Southfield and won in a, in a shootout. Um, so now I think Southfield's got to go to the swamp and usually we know how tough West Bloomfield is in the swamp. I mean, like they are a very tough team to play in, in their home building, in their home school. I mean, so I'll bet you Tyler kept has got to be very happy. Um, you know, about this hire. I mean, like, I know that a lot of people in Laker nation have to be excited about this hire. I mean, it gotta be, um, so, really, that's my take on it. I mean, I think Zach Hilbert's going to do a really good job there at West Bloomfield. Um, we're still looking for, you know, new coaches over at Avondale Pontiac. Um, I'm, I'm hearing rumblings over at Avondale who it might be, um, but I can't confirm that yet or verify it yet. I haven't heard anything over at Pontiac who their new head coach is going to be yet. Um, but, you know, you're getting to a, critical juncture, you know what I mean, where, you know, summer's going to start and you're going to have to, um, you know, so I'm very curious to see who, you know, these, especially Avenue and Pontiac, who they named as their new head coaches, knowing that West Bloomfield went within, within with their program, um, with their coaching hire. Um, I've always loved it when teams go within their staff. I mean, like, obviously, Hilbers is in the building, um, so that helps big time. And, you know, and I think that, um, you know, if you go within, within, you don't really have to change anything, you know what I mean, with the transition and all that. So that's my take on um, the, the hire over at West Bloomfield. Zach Hilbert's being a new head coach at West Bloomfield. Um, a lot of expectations. I honestly like the hire because, one, it keeps everything within. Um, it basically, like, you don't have to really change anything. Um you know, if it was somebody with outside the box, then I think that could be a, um, you know, that could be um, a really difficult transition. But for West Bloomfield, I really don't see any transition changes. I mean, well, there will be some new faces, obviously. But bottom line is, um, with um, with with the familiar face coaching the program, you know, I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to really stabilize some things, especially in the middle school levels um, and in the um, high school levels. So. You know, so I'm very curious to see how this is going to work over at West Bloomfield now that Zach Hilbert's the guy there. Um, so we'll see how this goes.
Um, let's go now from football here. I want to talk a little bit of girls basketball before we talk boys basketball for the rest of the show. Um, girls basketball, Berkeley made a, um, Berkeley, of course, Cody Feltner left Berkeley after the end of the year. And, you know, that was a big time. Um, it was a, it was a surprise, but I've noticed like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, that behind the scenes, it was pretty murky there. So Berkeley made, you know, Berkeley, um, so Cody Feltner stepped down at the season. Um, so they went with a new coach. Um, Clay, Sh- Clay Shavers, named the um, new head coach at Berkeley, takes over Cody Feltner. Um, Shaver was an assistant at Berkeley. He's been previously at Milford. Um, Well-known around the area. Um, of course, um, Shaver wrote on his Twitter feed here. Um, I'm going to read it here. Um, he says that he's thrilled and humbled to get to work with student athletes and hope we can give them a special experience while building a culture that they and the community can be proud of. Thank you to my family for supporting me and gently nudging me when I thought this chapter of my life was over. Thank you for everyone at Berkeley High School for an A-plus experience during the interview process. They really do it right. Thank you for all the other coaches I've worked with over the years. I've stolen from all of you and continue to. Can't wait to get after it. That's what chapters wrote on Twitter. Um, there, I, I like this hire for multiple reasons. Because... Shatner, of course, was an, was an assistant. Um, he knows his system. Um, that's what helped. I know, he's, I know he's been around, I mean, like, around the block a lot. I mean, like, people are going to say, um, you know, obviously, when you look at, you kind of look at the, the situation at Clarkston with Aaron Goodnow taking over, um, over there, you know, when um, John Wire left. Um, I think it's a similar situation. Because... Of, um, you know, when you look at the kids, they love Shatner. They love, I mean, like, what I've heard, a lot of recommendations. Um, and, you know, and everything worked out. I was really shocked how quickly that this process went. Um, in all honesty, really shocked how, the, how this process went quickly. Um, so that's a credit, you know what I mean, to getting, getting the coaches in place, getting everything ready, getting everything situated. One, if you have a coach in place, they're going to be, a, I mean, it'll help them with their scheduling. I mean, obviously it'll help them. Um, I will be very curious to see how Shaver does this because, because um, you look at Berkeley the last two years under Feltner. Yes, they've had, six, they've had a ton of success. I mean, last year they went, I mean, they went, they went to, they won a district title last year and they ended up, um, and this year, of course, they lost in the semis to that same team in the Detroit Renaissance. Um, yes, they don't have an Ashley Loon type player, but I think Malvin Nolan is going to be a heck of a player next year. I think when you look at this, when you look at this hire, I really think Malvin Nolan is going to benefit. I think Avery Wintergarden could benefit. I think Haley Kirkwood could benefit. And I think, um, and I think, um, I also think. There's several others. The challenge that, you know, like a, um, Nadia, like, a, um, like a Nadia Watt. I think, you know, when you look at this hire, um, you know, I'm curious to see how Berkeley's going to be. Um, if whatever division they're in, um, considering if they're either in the white or in the blue, I mean, like, don't know how the division alignment went. But when you look at Berkeley as a team, you know, as a program, you know, Berkeley's a team that, you know, you know, that's been like, you know, that's had their moments of greatness. They've had their moment. I mean, this year you look at Berkeley, they had a terrible start to the year. Then they bounced back. I mean, they bounced back. I mean, was very competitive late in the year. Um, and then of course he had that tough district. They knocked off Oak Park for falling to Detroit Renaissance. Um, I really think that this move, I think is going to really benefit because but it all depends if Shatner's there long, if shares are long term, because if he's if these are long term, I expect great things to happen over Berkeley, because I know that you know when you look at Berkeley, we know the rivalry with Royal Oak. Um, also, 
you know, you look at, of course, the um, support system over at Berkeley. I know Patty Kidd does a wonderful job over there at Berkeley. Um, you know, I'm very curious to see how, um, when those two um, meet. I mean, like, but um, I really think Shatner shares walked into a really nice situation there. Um, obviously, you know, there has got to be some changes, obviously. You know, um, you know, I think, I think a change in culture is needed over there. Um, maybe making it more like a um, family atmosphere like they did under Kirk, under Coach Kirk Carolyn. Um, you know, in Berkeley under Carolyn, you know, they've had some great teams. I mean, they had some great teams. Um, but when you look at, I'm curious to see what the direction Shea takes his team. Really curious. Because... You know, last year, Berkeley played a top nine conference. They played the likes of Utica Eisenhower. Um, I am very curious if, you know, if if they're going to continue that route. I mean, like, if it were me, um, i say you try to balance it out. And then obviously you got to look at your program strength. You got to look at your JV team. I mean, do you look at building a freshman team? I mean, I mean, like, I think there, there are some athletes over there at Berkeley that, you know, if, you want to, you can build three programs. I mean, you look at teams that have three programs in girls basketball. Um, you you look at it. You look at a course. You have Oxford, Lake Orion, Clarkson, West Bloomfield, Stony Creek, Rochester, Rochester Adams. Um, I mean, Groves. I mean, like they all have three programs. You know, and you can take advantage of the five quarter rule if you want to. Um, but when you really look at um, Berkeley, I will be very curious to see the direction this program goes because I think Berkeley can be on an upward pr- trajectory. I really do. I mean, like, things have got to go right for them. Um, and I really think that Clay that Clay can do that. I think Clay can get it done. I mean, like, you know, I, I really think Clay, ha- it, he's, really, he's really been proven. He's paid his dues. Um, and here's an opportunity for him to lead a program. You know, he, he wanted to be here. He wanted to be at Berkeley. So, and, and I think that's going to be, and I think, you know, when you, when you want to be at a place, good things are going to happen. And that's where I view with Clay. Because I think he's going to do a wonderful job there. He's going to do a wonderful job. I mean, he's got a good sports mind. I mean, he's going to keep that team competitive. I will be very curious to see how that district's going to be in June, though, for Berkeley. Because they've had a habit of having to go play Detroit Renaissance um, almost periodically. Um, even though they're in a district, they're close to Oak Park. They're close to, um, they're close to um, Royal Oak. Um, I will be curious to see how the MHA does this with Berkeley. Because if they put him in the district of Birmingham, I think they got a good chance. Even though Birmingham Marion will be better next year. But I think Berkeley matches up well with them. Um, but I think if you look at Berkeley, you know, going in the future, I mean, it's going to come down to, is the talent pool there? Um can they be more than capable of developing three programs? Um, there's just a lot of questions. A lot of questions. But they got the right coach in place now. If they, I mean, like, if the girls are happy there, I mean, the girls are happy, um, then I think great things are going to happen. And that's going to be a challenge. I mean, like, usually I, I view this hire almost similar to Clarkston. Um, but I just think that, um, but, you know, you got to produce results. You know, you're in a produce results league. I mean, like, you know, you got to produce results. And Berkeley's done that. Don't get me wrong. They've done that. But we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. But I really like the hire here of um, of Clay over there at Berkeley. Um, I think he's going to do a good job there. Um, it's just going to come down to his building program strength. I think that's going to be a challenge for Clay. Um, if... You know, obviously you have you have a, you have some proven players come back in Malvin Nolan. Um, 
I'll tell you what. I think Malvin Nolan's going to be in line for monster year next year. I really do think that. Um, also, you know, but I'm expecting a big stride from a from Avery Wintergarden. I'm expecting Nadia Watt to make the next step as well. Nadia Watt's going to be a sophomore, and I've heard a lot of good things about her. I mean, like, so I'm curious to see how how um Clay does this. Very curious. I'm curious how he schedules. I'm curious to see who, um, who, you know, obviously when he had 22 games, um, I'm curious to see how Berkeley does this. Very curious. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Okay, now let's go from girls basketball. We're going to talk boys basketball here. Um, obviously, you know, we're going to recap, of course, the, um, the run that, um, Ferndale had, of course, getting to their um, first Division II state championship since 1966. Um, we're going to also break down, of course, Adams's, um, Adams' path in the state quarterfinal. Um, their loss to, um, to Graham Blank in the state quarterfinals. Um, so we're going to break that down as well. Um, we're going to break that one down first. I think, you know, when you look at Rochester Adams, obviously with everything that they've been through, um, Obviously, the loss to um, you know the um to Grand Blank, um, you gotta you gotta wonder. I mean, like Grand, you gotta give Grand Blank's defense a lot of credit. You gotta give Coach Tory Jackson a lot of credit for what, viewing the scouting report very well and shutting down Peter Caracas. Um, Car- Cardacious. I mean, Cardacious had a has had a really good host season. Um, obviously, you know, I mean, he's had some. Key games where he's hitting some critical threes. Uh, Milford, perfect example. Um, and then the game against Clarkson, he was very instrumental in that game. Um, they didn't do a good job on William D. I mean, D had a nice game against Grand Blank. I mean, 17 points off um, a couple three-pointers. Um, Brady Prescorn had a really nice game. Um, but really, it wasn't a force inside, which was mind-boggling. I mean... Because normally you look at Brady Prescore and look at his height, you know what I mean? He's strong, he's big. Um, but they limited Prescore into the perimeter, which was a mind-boggling stat for me. Because normally, you know, I mean, Tay Boyd had a nice game, obviously, for Grand Blank. I mean, R.J. Taylor played pretty well in that game. Um, but the difference was the Grand Blank's role players got going, and Adams's did not. I mean, you could pretty much tell in the stats. Um, you know, and then, you know, I really think that the moment was too much for Adams, but when you look at Rochester Adams' season this year, um, you got to give it to coach Jared Thomas. I mean, going through the tough, going through it, the tough of red, you know what I mean? Obviously, you know, you're running into North Farmington, you're doing Oak Park, you're doing with Clarkston. I mean, you're dealing with, um. You know, North, I mean, we mentioned North Farmington on a consistent basis. I mean, then you had to do in Ferndale as well. I mean, like, see, that's not an easy division. So, you know, for them, and then, of course, going to that district, um, obviously going through Lake Orion um, in a physical, typical football game. I know that would make coach, um, coaches Chris Bell and Tony Petrito really proud. Um, and then that district final where... William D, credit to Noah Kim for that rebound, setting up the three point shot by D to win that game for um for um Rochester Adams um to win that one over Utica Eisenhower and then of course getting to the regional um beating Milford beating Clarkston um earning their first district t- regional title in school history um that says a lot right there it really does because. And you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, Jared Thomas has done a really nice job with this program. I mean, he's built this program, you know, when he took over back in 2019, um, this program had two programs. This program was down in the dumps. They had a lot of their kids leave, transfer out of Adams. So basically, Thomas was left with, you know, having to rebuild the entire program. I remember talking to him about this, and I said, You know what? I mean, like, you got your opportunity here to build a program, um, build it what your image was, you know, but you got to get three programs in there. You got to get three. You can't have two. 
if you have two, then you're really doing your freshman a disservice. And well, behold, Adams had three programs. You know, yeah, they struggled a little bit their first year, but you know, they got better. They grew as a te- as a program. They grew, they grew, they grew. Worked hard, and look where Adams at right now: two district championships, first regional title um, in school history. And I'll bet you, what, I'll tell you what, Jared Thomas, one of the best coaches right now in Adams history. You have to put Thomas up there with John Hall. You have to, because. We know how good John Hall's been over at, at Adams. We knew how we know how good he's been. But Thomas, you know, he's gotten this team to that regional championship, you know, that pedestal. And you look at the team he's got coming back next year, you know, pending if Brady Priest Gordon stays. Um, because you don't know what's gonna happen with this football situation. Um, I know he's being recruited by several schools, several D one schools. Could he graduate early? That's the big question that Thomas has with Adams. I mean, you have some players in Kardashian and G. Your freshman program is very good. Your JV program is very good. So, but I'm curious to see how, you know, everything for Adams next year, you know, yes, you have the shooters, but if pre-scoring comes back, that's a big deal. If he doesn't come back, it's going to be, it's a big loss in the middle. I mean, considering you lose Brock or Kawa as well, you lose um, you lose several others in that interior. Um, so, but you know, and I've been hearing mentions Brady Prescott could be a candidate for next year for Mister Basketball for the State of Michigan. But the big question is, will he play or not? That's a big question. Um, but you got to give Thomas a lot of credit what he's done. I mean, he's built that program. He's Adams is right where they want to be. They're I think they're the best basketball school right now in Rochester with the way that um, things have been. Um, he has done a remarkable job building that program back to where it needs to be. And, you know, and I think, you know, when you look at how to build a program, you know, I think Thomas does it very well one-on-one. So congratulations to Adams on a really good year. Great year for them. Um they, it was just an incredible year for them. I mean, bottom line, you know what I mean? Just give Adams a lot of credit. I mean, really. Um, let's look at, of course, the the run of, of Ferndale. Obviously, when you look at Ferndale, the Eagles, they um, we know that they've had, I mean, when Ron Rickman took over for Tom Stanton back in 2018 and 19, I mean, they they improved real quickly when he took over. I mean, he brought several of his kids in. Um, Ferndale, but they've had some up and downs, and then they finally broke through. Um, two years ago, when they got the state um semifinals, um, first time that happened since 1985, they lost to Grand Rapids Catholic Central, um, in the first time, and then they got back to the thick of it the next year. Ran in the same opponent in Grand Rapids Catholic Central and lost that one. Same round. Um, but with Ferndale, I got to owe Coach Ron Rickman an apology on air. I mean, playing that tough schedule. Playing, I mean, like, even I'm saying, like, this schedule is killing them, you know what I mean? Like, and all that. I mean, it toughened them up. That one of five start early, you know, they didn't, they didn't back down. For a fact, the team of winning 16 in the last 17 games to close out the year, that says something. Your only loss was to a very good North Farmington team on the road. I mean, that says something right there. So when you look at Ferndale's path this past week, it was going to be a tough matchup for Ferndale going against Goodrich. Um, considering Goodrich, scrappy team, physical team, um, and I got to get the Martians a lot of credit. They fought in that game with Ferndale. They fought. I didn't feel like Ferndale had the game in control. You know, yeah, the deficit was six. I mean, like, they got within 10, within 12 at one point. But Goodrich kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And Ferndale kept, you know, missing free throws, missing assignments. I mean, like, it got a little uneasy for them. But they managed to survive that game. They really did. Um, But... 
Goodrich kept coming and coming and coming. I mean, that's a credit to the Martians, their legendary coach. Um, that's a big time credit to Goodrich. I mean, the way they played. I was very impressed with how Goodrich played in that game against Fort Knuckles. Just really impressed what I saw. I mean, they just kept battling, battling, and battling. I mean, Ferno had to survive that game. I mean, really, that was that was the difference in that game. Was Ferndale had they had the game in control. They had everything. They had everything going where they've been. And then all of a sudden, like, you're going like, wait a minute here. You know what I mean? That game was 71-66. And, you know, Goodrich, I mean, Goodrich had 10 three-pointers in that game. Cameron Reed led him with 19 points in that one. I mean, Chris Williams had 10. Um, I didn't think Ferndale played well in that game. I, I just didn't think they did. But they did just enough to win that game. And then they go to the state semifinals. Um, obviously, um, you know, Ferndale, of course, had that really tough matchup with Saginaw. Um, of course, Saginaw, we know, has proven power in the state. We know that's that's the same school Draymond Green went to. Um, of course, we know what Draymond Green's been doing um, when he did at Michigan State and also in the NBA. So it was going to be a very interesting matchup between Fern And also, this was the same round that Ferndale had issues with of course, albeit it wasn't Grand Rapids Catholic Central this year. Of course, Grand Rapids Catholic Central, if you want to know what happened to them this year, they lost to Hudsonville Unity Christian by two points, but then Hudsonville Unity Christian got knocked out by Grand Rapids South Christian So in the state quarterfinal. So they lost the regional final. Uh, Grand Rapids Catholic Central did to um, Hudsonville Unity Christian um, in that round. So if you wondered what happened to Grand Rapids Catholic Central, I just explained it to you just now. Um, so, Ferndale took on Saginaw. And it was going to be an interesting game. Because Saginaw, they were battle-tested, went through the thumb area, obviously. Um, they beat Cass City. Um, they're a good team. I mean, they're very good. We've known Saginaw for a long time. They've had some classic battles, especially with their arch rival from Arthur Hill. Um, I mean, and Saginaw had some really good, um, Saginaw had some really good teams. I mean, Saginaw, you know, I mean, that Saginaw team was really good. I mean, they had a, um, you know, they got, I mean, their well coach under Julian Taylor has been there for 13 years. Um, they won over Cadillac 61-57 over Alma. Um, Taylor Lowry had 16 points in that game. DeLawrence Clark at 14, Brandon McKinney at 11 for Saginaw. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Ferndale had a lot of experience. I mean, they, they have a lot of experience. We know that. So it was, it was going to be a heck of a game regardless. And it was tight. It was tight throughout. I mean, you know, I mean like, but, but Ferndale had a chance. They found a way, won that one 65-60 over Saginaw. Um, Caleb Renfro at 16 points. Chris Williams, Cameron Reed at 12 points each. And um, and um, Jane Hardeman, of course, the transfer from Warren Mott, had um, 10 points for Ferndale in that game. Um, it was a great win for Juan Rickman at the time. Um, so you look at, of course, Ferndale, they've overcame that hump, overcame. They're back in the state final for the first time since 1966. Um they're going to be, they're, when they knocked off, um, I think it was Kalamazoo they knocked off um, in the state final. Um, they were taking on Grand Rapids South Christian, a team that, that, that made their return back to state final for the first time since 2005. Um, playing that Saturday night, last game of the boys' basketball season. I mean, everything is set for that game. Everything's set. Um... So when you look at that game, and all, of, and of course we know Grand Rapids saw Christian. I mean, they won a Division Four, the Division Four State Championship in football, um, knocking off Goodrich. So you gotta wonder. So people ask me why is Fern not in Division Four for football, and I can give you that answer pretty easily because when you look at the enrollment, Ferndale and Ferndale Univers Ferndale is a co-op team. I mean, Ferndale and Ferndale University. They co-op with each other. So that explains why Ferndale in football 
is in D2 and not in D4 because they merged with Ferndale University. So, and you look at Grand Rapids South Christian, you know, they're in D4 for football. I mean, Goodrich, they're in D4 for football. So, you know, that's the answer I would give to the viewers who wondered why Ferndale was in D2 for football and for, uh, and, um, you know, with, with more kids compared to in, in basketball when they're in D2, you know, I mean, the enrollment's different. The enrollment's different. I mean, when you think about it, when they don't have the kids from Ferndale University on that roster at Ferndale, whereas they do when it comes to football. So that's the answer I can give them. Um, Grand Rapids saw uh, Christian. We knew they had they had two really good players in them. Um, and um, Jake Ramos and Jake DeHaan, of course, Jake DeHaan had 28 points against um, Hudsonville Unity Christian. He was also their star quarterback in the um, state final game, in the state finals in D4, knocking off Goodrich. Um, but, uh, and of course, Jake Ramos, he had 17, he had 12 points in their 40-35 um, overtime win in the state semifinal against um, Romulus Summit Academy. Um, so when you really look at this game, and they and they also had some nice pieces as well. I mean, like Nate Brinks and Sam Mendorf were two very solid players for first year coach Taylor Johnson. So everything's set. Stage is set. So when you look at the game, how it went, um, Grand Rapids saw Christian actually controlled the game. They controlled the tempo. I mean, they it was a low scoring game. And then when you look at, of course, what Ferndale likes to do, we know Ferndale likes to run it up, speed it up. I mean, they had to try to do it. You know, they um, they had to try to speed up the Sailors, and, you know, they had a really hard time early. I mean, the game was played at Grand Rapids South Christian's pace. But Ferndale found a way. You know, they got him to speed it up. I mean, like, um, and, you know, they found a way to speed it up, and they ended up winning that one. Um, they ended up winning that game of 44 to um, 38. Um, it was a heck of a game. I mean, just a heck of a game. And, you know, give credit where credit's due to Coach Juan Rickman for getting his team ready to go uh, in that one. Playing the style of play that, that Grand Rapids South Christian did. Trying to slow it down. Um, don't let Ferndale control the control tempo and everything. Um, that's what happened. Um Chris Williams had 16 points. Noah Blocker had 7 points. And Cam Reed had 4 points for Ferndale. They also did a really good job um, limiting Ferndale's two top scorers, um, Jake Vermas and um, Jake DeHaan, the 28 points combined. They had 14 points each in that game. Um, and you know how it was going to be with the low-scoring game. I mean, you know, defense was going to be the key in that game. And it ended up being the key was Ferndale defended. They defended. Got him, got it to speed up just in the nick of time, and they found a way to win that game. That's really where, um, you know, where Ferndale was. You know what I mean? Obviously, you got to look at the program that where it's at. Um, Coach Juan Rickman has done a, um, you got to give Coach Juan Rickman a lot of credit, what he's done in five years over there at Ferndale. I mean, obviously, people are going to say, well, what if they're in Division One? I? I mean, what if they were in Division One? Do you think they do this? Um, I think because of enrollment, um, for, let's not forget, Ferndale is one of the smallest enrolled schools in the OA. I mean, obviously, I think they are the smallest enrolled school in the OA. Um, because of, you know, with, with the enrollment numbers there, um, Ferndale has to be in D2. I mean, you know, I mean, like, if they have an enrollment hike, you know, they could be up in D1, but to me, I think, hard, to me, I think Ferndale right now, you know, I like where they're at. I mean, like, um, you know, enrollment wise, or I mean, like, they're, I mean, like, um, so, but we'll see what happens. But when you look at the Ferndale as a team, they do lose a lot of talent. I mean, they do lose, um, they lose, they lose seven seniors. I mean, you lose like Cameron Reed, Caleb Renfro, Noah Blocker, Chris William, Jane Hardiman, and Jacoby Jackson. Those are going to be some big losses that Coach Juan Rickman has to adjust has to address heading into next year. They do have they do have Trenton Root um and um Marquise Young coming back. I mean both those two guys have played significant roles um this year for Ferndale. Um you know playing in clutch situations. So 
when you look at Fern, and then, of course, program strength, you know it's always going to be a concern for Coach Juan Rickman. Um, when you look at program strengths, I mean, it's not going to be an easy road for them next year. So I'm very curious to see where Ferndale does next year because, you know, now instead of being the hunters for the Division II state crown, they're not going to be the hunted. I mean, you look at teams like, um, like Michigan, like more Michigan collegiate, you look at, you know, they could be a player next year. You look at other teams around the state who could be really good next year. I mean, you know, Grand Rapids Catholic Central is going to still be there. Grand Rapids South Christian, I'm curious to see how they do. Um, you look at, of course, Romulus Summit Academy. They're another team to really watch for next year. I mean, like, D2 is going to be, D2 is tough. I mean, their district this year for Ferndale, that was not an easy district for them, despite having Ferndale U and Detroit Old Redford Academy in there. Their regional was brutal this year with, um, you know, Detroit University Prep, a team they lost to earlier in the year. And then, of course, you had, um, of course, Ward Michigan Collegiate, um, which we know how good that they are. They were this year. So, you know, their path in the postseason was really tough. So, you know, even though they had their district and regional were held at Hazel Park, but still the opponents they played were just absolutely brutal, um, to say the least there. So now let's look at, of course, the shortcomings. I mean, obviously... You know, I always post shortcomings after the season ends and all that. Um, when you look at teams that I think could make some noise next year, um, North Farmington does lose a lot of talent. Um, you know, obviously from their disappointing loss to Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the regional final. Um, we talked Ferndale already. Um, obviously, when you look at Ferndale, I mean, they're going to be solid. Adams, we know they're going to be good again, but they do lose a lot. Um, you know, I mean, like, um, but I am very curious to see if um, Brady Prescorn comes back for Adams. Um, that's something to really watch for there. Clarkston will be an interesting team to watch next year as well. I mean, yeah, they lose Brandon Wiley, they lose Frank Schuster and Kevin Aldighton. Um, Matt Flikers really improved this postseason. Brady Coase is an interesting one. I'm curious to see how He's doing how he does, especially um if he if he graduates early. I'm curious to see because he's I know he's getting a lot of D1 looks. Desmond Steppens is another one I'm curious to see and John Call. So I think Clarkson could be a serious player next year. Um, despite you know having a quote rebuild, which I don't believe one bit, which that was. I mean, Clarkson still they've had a lot of battles. They've been battle tested. They had that crazy game with Fenton where they had to survive that. And then, and then um, the regional final um, lost to um, Adams. I mean, that was the one that did them in. Oak Park, obviously, with them. Um, the UD Jesuit problem still there. I mean, yes, they got Geo Hutchins coming back. I mean, like, but still, this is a team that's got to find a way to overcome their cup problem. If they do, they're going to be fine. I mean, like, but they've got to beat UAD Jesuit somehow, in some way. I mean, that's really where it is with Oak Park. If they want to make the next step, you've got to get by UAD Jesuit. That's really what it is with the Knights going forward there. Um, West Bloomfield, you know, they had a nice year. I mean, turn they had a 12-win turnaround. Um, knocked off Bloomfield Hills in the first round, but lost to Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, they do lose... They do lose... Um, Mitchell say they lose Terrence Curry, um, Evan Amore, Dewan Moore. I mean, they do have Chris Britton coming back, Corey Pittman, Donnie Watts, Caleb Cardell, and Donnie Edwards coming back. West Blue is going to be a player next year. I think they, they could be a player next year. Um, no matter what division they're in, I, I think they could be a player. So we'll see what Coach Arnett Jordan has coming back. Um, Groves, of course, had a really nice year this year under Coach Mark West, but had a really disappointing postseason. Um, they do return um John Simpson and Josh and um they do return um Josh John Simpson and Josh Gibson. Um Brody Tushman's back and Elijah Yelder. I'm watching Landon McKinney and Paul Hubbard. I think those two guys can make some noise next year for Coach Mark West. Um they don't they won't have a lot of height, which is gonna be a problem for them next year. I mean, that could be a big time problem for them. They don't have a lot of height. You know, that could be very interesting. Um, Troy, of course, they had they um lost in the regional 
semis to North Farmington. Um, they do lose Darius Whiteside, Zach Pinoza, Bryce Parker, and Connor Cosmano. They do return three starters. Mason Parker, um, you have um, Chase Kuyper, and, of course, John Whiteside. Um, watch for players like Greg Tester, Jaden Peacock. We know a lot from him in football. Um, <coughs> he could take over that role for Darius Whiteside. Um, they have a younger set of brothers, the Cosmanos and the Pinozas. That's another two players to watch for next year for Troy. Um, Bloomfield Hills, of course, they lose Noah Adamchich. Um, one fifteen games. I mean, you lose players like Noah Adamchich, DJ Jackson, Amon Taylor, and Don Shea. You do have Drew Wilson coming back and Brandon Newellen. Um, so those are some good pieces to work with. Um, program strength's been okay for them. But I'm curious to see what Coach Brian Canfield has going forward there. Um, Lake Orion, when you look at the Dragons, um, 12 and 12, they lose DJ Morrow, um, Blake Liddell, Nate Haverilla, um, Kevin Tobe, and um, Mateo DCO. They lose five seniors. Um, they do have Ethan Sharkey coming back. Gabe Scott is going to have to take on a bigger role. Sam Blakely, Nick Galvin. Uh, I don't know what Caden DeGreffin is going to be. You know, if he does come back or not for Lake Orion, um, I will be very curious. I mean, it depends on his football situation. Um, if he does come back, it's a big plus for Coach Jose Andrades. Um, Lake Orion could struggle next year, um, being a very young team. I mean, we'll be curious to see what happens there. Farmington had a really rough year this year. You have Greg Grays coming back. Um, they have Jordan Turner, Daniel Co Daryl Coltrane, Quinnette Sniper, and Anthony Bailey all coming back. Um, Program strength is a big-time concern for Farmington next year. I mean, when you look at the Falcons, I mean, like, program strength is a big-time concern for them. But they should be better next year. Seahome, of course, winning the division title this year, the Blue Crown. Uh, upset Groves was a big deal for them. Um, they do lose um, They do lose um, Jeff Sheldon and Ben Diskin. They lose seven seniors. Um, they have Finley Sparty coming back. Program strength should be solid. She needs to be in the mix next year. Oxford, you know, they had a lot of ups and downs. Fell 6 4 40 at the Grand Blank in the district semifinals. Um, they do lose four seniors in Locust Botain, Dylan Stone, Kyle Demantria. Um, they do return a bulk of their scoring led by Dominic Cassis, Jake Champagne, both Katie Brothers, Drew and Jay. Um, you know, and then um, and Luke Stolfin. I mean, like, program strength looks to be solid for Oxford. Um, they should be in the mix next year, whatever division they're in. Um, Stony Creek, it was a really tough year for them. They lose a lot of senior experience. Um, they do got, they do got um, Trey Walker and Tommaso Sincola coming back. Um, they're going to have to really, they're younger, their JV and freshman levels were pretty good this year. Um, but like I said, second year for Coach, um, it'll be a second year. For coach from Jeff Owen, um, I, I expect the transition period to continue over there at Stony Creek um, going forward there. Rochester, of course, they had a ton of up and downs this year. They lose Grant Calgano, Eli Collage, Rex Maltoy, Kamani Potts. Max Moll, Noah Kim, um, Logan Pleasant are coming back. And Jake Tandy, of course, the future is bright there for Rochester, especially with Max Moll, with Max Moll um, at point guard. Um, curious to see what happens there with Rochester. Um, and then you have Berkeley, of course, Berkeley, they, um, fell 77-23 to UD Jesuit, lose six seniors, including Hunter Robinson, Tamir Rekovich, um, they do have Donovan Powell and Mitchell O'Connor coming back, I mean, program strength looks off for Coach Joe Sermo, Joe Sermo and his team, um, so I expect Berkeley to be in the conversation next year, um, maybe competing for another league title, um, Troy Athens, you know, they had a very tough 61-60 loss to Sterling Heights Stevenson. Um, they do lose a lot. They lose Kylie Harper, Doug Mercier, Brock Thornton, Evan Cohon, Alex Propke, and, Bro and Brogan with them. Um, they do have they do have Emmanuel Robinson, Luke Giovanni, Hayden Crum, Eli Garvin coming back. I mean, program strength looks solid for Troy Athens. Um, I think Troy Athens could be a player next year. I mean, we'll see. Royal Oak. Um, interesting year for the Ravens. I mean, like, Start off hot, went cold a little bit. Um, you know they do lose. Um, they do lose a lot. I mean they lose Dylan Hoppin, their leading point scorer at Royal Oak history. 
Davis Arbiter and Rashad Wilson, they lose them. Um, they have Nick Hoffman and Cam DeClark coming back. Um, program strength is a bit of a concern for Aaron Smith and his team. Um, the Royal could be a player next year. We'll see. Harper Woods, um, they do have a lot coming back. Made a run in the um, in Division One. They fell to Gross Point South in District Final. Of course, Gross Point South had a nice run. Um, they lose DeAndre Williams, but they do have Julian Young, Isaiah Lewis, Kobe Bainley, Tyler Rowry, and Stephon Buford coming back for Coach Juan Porter. Program strength looks to be solid for Harper Woods. Um, I'm curious to see what the Pioneers have next year. Um, I think Harper Woods could be a player next year, whatever division they're in. That's something to really watch for there. Um, Avondale, of course, they had a um, coaching change middle of the year. Um, they lose four seniors, including Malik Adams and Jeremiah Phillips. They do have Justin Sykes and Decorious White coming back. Um, curious to see how the coaching search goes if Aaron Fox is the guy over there at Avondale. Um, I will be very curious to see what happens there with the coaching transition and search there if they go that route, um, or if they let Fox become the head coach there. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens there with them. Ferndale University, um, up and down here this year. They lose several talented players to graduation, but I really like where the program's at for Coach Josh Nix. Um, I think program strength is on the rise over there at Ferndale University. Um, and then Pontiac, it was a rough year for Coach Damon O'Neill. Um, program strength is a big-time concern for Pontiac. Um, a lot of questions when you look at the Phoenix, um, going forward there. So that's my take on the basketball shortcomings around the OA, obviously. Um, uh, as we get into spring sports season, um, we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at second of 4650 at blogspot.com. Have recastable girls and boys basketball. Have, of course, the articles this week from the blog. Um, we'll see what happens going forward here. I wish everybody best of luck in the spring break. And also during the spring sports season, which starts back and back up next week. We've had lacrosse games already. We've had girls soccer games already played. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward um, as we head into the um, start of the spring sports season. And a lot of excitement going forward. When you, especially when you look at soccer, obviously you got Raj, the, um, the kiss of death in the red division. So we'll see how that goes going forward there. All right, man, I'm signing off here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. See you all next week, and God bless all. See you next week.